Hey, what's up? I was not expecting to make a video. I was not expecting to go on a trip, but my friend Slava texted me a couple of days ago and he was like, hey, did you see the forecast for Davenport? And it's calling for eight to 12 foot waves today. I'm gonna drive up, try and get this to happen. I've also got a drone operator coming up to film the adventure. We'll see how it goes. I'm having a lot of trouble deciding what foil to ride. The Viper allows me to do freestyle and it handles waves, you know, pretty well. It can handle a lot of power. The downside is if you breach that thing, it, it blows up. The Proto, on the other hand, you can kind of recover from a breach. It's just a little bit less predictable, but it has a lot more glide. Not that I'm gonna need much glide today, but it could allow me to do more stuff on the wave than the Viper 150. The truth is I really need that progression 125 today. That would be the perfect foil for the, these conditions. And then also the mass length is kind of a, a question too. Having that extra length gives you a lot more room for error. But then if I want to do any freestyle, once again, the 95, I don't really like doing freestyle on it, it's too long. It's a dilemma. One thing that is swaying me toward the Viper though is that that Proto does not have a matte paint job on it. So it's got like shiny carbon all over and El Dueño waiting out there for us. Let's not give him anything shiny to, to look at. Gear issues. Man, I'm so tired. Yeah, because I fixed, I stayed up fixing my, my VB board uh, yesterday. I had to do some sanding after doing some epoxy in the morning. The boxes have been flexing, but Vince is very close on finishing a new, slightly smaller one. I don't think the board's gonna be ready today, but how sick would that be? A lot of times I'll stop and get a tri-tip at this gas station. Uh, that's like a thing in Central Valley is to get a tri-tip sandwich from the gas station. These are really good uh, at this particular one. It's Royal Oaks Market. It's by Watsonville. Look at that thing, it's so good. All right, look at this. Vince is getting the foot straps dialed in. I We went back and used like ninth grade geometry to get all the math <laughs> right and it's gonna be perfect. It's pretty cool. Look at this thing. It's uh, probably around 60 liters, a little bit smaller so we can do back flips, hopefully, and maybe front flips, front flips maybe. Double checking everything. The smallest little changes make such a difference on these foot straps. So if you don't get them exactly right, and then everyone likes them different. So the F the F one was like really uh, close together. The access has a wide spread, a looser angle, and I tend to like that. So we're doing right around forty five degrees for the front foot strap. Some guys like it a little bit more parallel. Some other new boards on the. This one's got the. Uh, the Mike's Lab setup, and this is the new sub. That thing looks sick. Staying busy. Yeah. <laughs> Here it is, all laid out with the foot straps. If this is wrong, I have no one to blame since I was actively involved in measuring it. You know, we all know that I break gear, so <laughs> I broke a foil first, and then I broke the F1 board in three sessions. Uh, but I was flexing the box on the last one just because of how much I was jumping in and probably where I was riding the foil. So yeah. Vince has made uh, even beefier going forward. Uh, you guys are never going to break these. It's just me. <laughs> and so on this one, we're using uh, inch and a quarter Divinacil versus the 5 eighths Divinacil sandwiched in between with uh, 12 ounces of uh, S glass. We extended the, uh, the Venezuela out another like two and a half, three inches. 
forward. So that's going to really stiffen up the flex in it. We're going to go over the top with probably two layers of six ounce S, a uh, layer 5.5 carbon and a layer of four ounce S. Okay. Just to really lock everything in. And uh, if you break it, you're on your own. Baby. <laughs> The next place I stopped was Scott's Creek because I wanted to get a really clean view of the waves. And this is probably the best footage of showing how big the waves really were on this day. Um, because I wasn't just sitting around waiting for big sets to come in and, and, and film stuff. You can see that's an 11 meter kite out there and that guy's just ripping on it. And it's just a huge wave. There's actually a windsurfer in this shot. Look behind the wave. There's a windsurfer. That's how big the waves are. You couldn't even see him. All right, this is the man responsible for this terrible decision we're about to make. What's up, Slava? Yeah, you're going to have a really fun session. Big waves, oil, wind. How big is it out there, you think? Uh, maximum 15 foot faces. The biggest. 15 foot. It looks at least 15 foot on the big ones. Yeah, the swell is uh, 14 uh, foot, 14 seconds on the boys. Nice. Let's stay safe out there, man. Okay. I'll be right behind you. Yeah, you too. Good luck. <laughs> He's on the Eagle 790. That's probably a 95 mast? Yes. 95 mast. That's the right choice. I wish I had a smaller foil. Okay. See you all there. All right. See you soon. Got an axe just going out. He forgot his long mast, so he's on like 80, 82, I think. A couple of looky loos. Probably the smart ones. You want to be in the video? <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get this going. I think I'm gonna go with the 95 mast. That's a lot of white water. <laughs> Maybe we'll do backflips a different day. <laughs> Gregory showing up. Drone pilot extraordinaire, breathwork coach, fire breather. Oh, my fire stuff. What's up? How y'all doing? Good to see you, man. Dude, it's huge. I know. Oh, dude, it's so good over by Steve Marie. Oh, yeah, beautiful. I don't have any footage from what happens next, so we'll just skip ahead and talk about it. I got worked, worked. I'm not gonna say I almost died, but it was, it was a possibility. <laughs> it was, it was a legitimate possibility. Luckily, Slava came down and helped me bring my board back, which was, uh, if not, that board was just gonna be. I don't know where that board was gonna be because I had to crawl over some rocks and I didn't even know. But then we went back out and uh, it was pretty much unrideable due to the seaweed. 50 yards you'd have seaweed on your foil but hey we're alive and uh that's all that matters we're not i'm not the only one here that that lost some gear it's the shore break that last 10 feet coming in you get sucked out and it just pulls it up it's gonna probably have to go out to someone else i don't think i can do this one two Two windsurfing sails and then my wing. The first time, so I, the first time I went out, there's like a channel here and I drifted down and then there was a massive set came through and there was no wind and I got smashed. I got held under so long, getting pulled by the wing two times. I, I was able to catch a breath in between, but it was way bigger than that. It's, it's the tides come up, so now the waves are kind of small. And then I kept just getting smashed down there, down there, down there. I went around the corner and uh, there was a beach. And I said, you know, I, I better just try and get to the beach. Because you run out, of, you, you, can't, you, you can't get out of there. You have to crawl all the way over. Luckily, Slava came and helped me with my board. I almost lost the board. Like, the board almost went out to sea. Um, had to climb over those rocks, jump in. It's pretty crazy. The reason there's no footage is that in certain areas you need prior authorization to fly a drone and we hadn't done that and then at davenport gregory didn't have any internet service uh, your cell service to get internet and get the authorization so he tried for a while and then 
he, to make his trip worthwhile, he went down to Steamer Lane to try and surf. We're both still alive. I know, right? That was good. How was the, how was the... Honestly, it was gnarly. Did you paddle out? I did paddle out, yeah. It was a little yeah. small, it was a little smaller than earlier. Okay. But, um, you know, I got out there and like, it's just like the current super strong. And it's like battling the whole time. Finally got a good wave. And then like, I wound up drifting past the staircase that went down. And I was like, what do I do? I don't want to, it's like really far away. So then I like paddled over to this guy. I was like, hey, is there another way out of here? He's like, yeah, over there. And I went up like probably like a half mile to the next one. And as I'm getting out the first staircase, I was going to go out. Somebody got slammed into it. And like, there was a bunch of ambulance and shit. And like, I was like, damn, I'm happy to go that way. Whoa, but you caught a wave? I did catch a wave. Yeah, yeah it was cool. It was like, good head high. Nice. Yeah, it was good. Sick. I was here. You were out there for a minute. I was I actually, you know, I drove all the way to Davenport. Uh huh. And I tried to connect to like a coffee shop and then wasn't uh -huh. gonna drive back. And it kept on being like server error. It wouldn't uh -huh. even like, even though I had internet, it wouldn't connect to the thing. You know? Dude, it was garbage. Yeah. It was. We so, made it out though. That was cool. You yeah. almost didn't. There was like two out right there. Oh, watching yeah, it. Yeah, I was like, like cheering. I was like, come on. Tim, there was, get over that. there was just a little bit more wind. Yeah. But, um, the, uh, there was so much seaweed. Slava caught one or two decent ones, but for the most part, it was not very good. Anyway, I'll turn this off. All right, let's talk about yesterday <laughs> now that we've decompressed a little bit. Uh, Gregory took off this morning to do Dawn Patrol at Steamer Lane. Hopefully he's getting some surfing in. So, Slava is quickly becoming that friend who, whenever he calls you up, you gotta say, huh, is this a good idea, or is this not a good idea? Davenport, usually you can get out when it's big, because there's a channel, and there's kind of like, you know, there's a big wave on, on the one side, there's a big wave on the other side, and you can kind of get through the middle. But it was so big yesterday, that occasionally it would come in through that middle section as well the problem with davenport is there's a bluff so the wind there's a big wind shadow on the inside you have to start really far up on the on the north end and then wait for it to look clear and then you paddle 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 and then try and get out to the wind line and you know drift a little bit and hopefully get up before you end up over here well the first time i went out I felt like there was a little bit of wind, like I could almost get up. So I had my wing in the air and I was trying to get it to pull me out. And I kept going. And, and then the other problem with Davenport is this time of year, it's tons of seaweed. There was so much seaweed. So I'm clearing the foil. I'm kind of like lollygagging. And then I finally start getting to the wind line. But I'm now like pretty far over here by the next set of waves. And right as I'm about to get on foil... A couple of big ones come in over 10 foot, you know, like double overhead, overhead to double overhead, probably. I, I'm able to on um, one sort of stand up and get over it, over the top, but then the next one's breaking already before, um, that one I think was breaking like right before it got to me. So what I normally do is I turn around, I jump off the board, I turn around, I grab the back foot strap, point the board down wind or down wave. And then I grab the left handle of the wing, and as the wave comes, I try to lift the wing up as high as I can over it. And usually that works pretty well. You go for a ride, but it's usually okay. I went for a long ride on this one. It pulled me underwater a long way. Could not have held my breath too much longer. Um, I think... Yeah, the, on that one, yeah, I think I held on to the wing that one. I, I held on to everything that time. I got up. And I was like, whew, okay. I look around and I see there's another one coming like right away. And this one's going to break right on top of my head. And I think it was probably bigger. So I take a couple of breaths. You know, the first time I got a lot of breaths. This time I just take like one or two breaths. I grab it again and I get smashed by that one even worse. Halfway through the wing rips out of my hand. Uh, and so I think the board does too. I don't know. Every, but the didn't break, didn't come off the leash or didn't, you know, didn't rip the wing off. It was just on for 
a good 15 to 20 minutes of me just getting smashed and pushing down and then past like the reef past the rocks and then i'm around the corner still no wind because now i'm yeah there's just still not enough wind and so i'm trying to get out there's not enough wind and then the waves would keep smashing me a couple of times i thought you know i might be able to get out i might i might and i like i try to get up and like yeah, it was just there was not enough wind for me to get up quickly and then get over these monster waves that were breaking already so I saw some beach and I thought, you know, before I go any further, I better, uh, I better just get in and, and reassess. So I got to the beach. First thing I did was take out my phone from underneath my life vest and send a text to, to Gregory saying, I'm fine. Like, don't, you know, don't call the coast guard and stuff. But I knew that he didn't have perception, but I just thought <laughs> that was what I was worried about more than anything was just like, I don't want this to become like a huge thing. The problem is, once you're down in that beach, you're, they're just massive sea cliffs, like a hundred foot tall sea cliff with crumbly rocks. The beach is separated from the Davenport Landing Beach by a big uh, rock, like outcroppings and and that kind of thing. So I didn't even know if I could walk back from where I was, or if like I know people who have gotten stranded there like overnight on a rock or something and then they have to either get like i think they get a rope put down the um put down the cliff by by like the you know fire department or something and then they pull them up uh, i did definitely did not want that to happen so i started like you know i left my gear on the beach and i started looking around climbed up the rock trying to see if it was feasible to get back and it looked like it might be feasible but you know there was these like coves these rocky crow coves with like a crazy whitewash and little caves and stuff and the and the waves coming in so it was, it was a little sketchy and stuff there was no way i could get my board and stuff back by myself and then slava came to the rescue a bit and i see him and he's like hey you okay and i'm like i give him the okay and then he starts walking over toward me and then we sort of come up with a plan like and he's like yeah i think you can get back this way and uh so then i packed up I, I deflated my wing i attached it to my board and i was able to like put it up on the rocks but getting it across the outcropping to like the other set of rocks and the other beaches was a nightmare you had to do some like minor rock climbing and and then some down climbing you know to get you know up and down the rocks and with the gear it was just like it was almost impossible so at one point i decided just to throw the throw the board into the the whitewash like whirlpool area and then like the board starts drifting out to sea and i'm like okay the board's gone like whatever but i jump in after it it would suck me out and then a wave would like push me into the cove and i would like try and paddle or or like push off the rocks and get in and somehow i managed to get over to the other side where slava was he climbed up first and I handed him the board and then I climbed up and like, you know, I'm a pretty decent rock climber, even though I don't rock climb anymore, but it was just like super uh, covered in algae and stuff. So you're just like, you didn't even want to, you know, trust the feet. There was no good handholds either. They were all sort of like uh, sloping down. The board was getting like smashed on the rocks and stuff. There might've been some uh, problems with the tracks on the last board. Cause it, just cause I was jumping so much. There's no problem with that glassing. I, at one point I dropped the board like, full on onto the rocks i thought for sure i cracked it and stuff and when i got back it was actually totally fine which was amazing but yeah we got all the gear back slava was like all right let's go again <laughs> and i was like all right let's do it i thought about rigging a six which honestly would have been probably the right choice because just to get out for sure it was still gusty on the outside so anyway the second time I do the same thing, I got to around the same point and there was a couple of building ones, but I was able to get over them before they broke. Just barely though. I almost did the same exact thing. I got out and I started riding and it was crazy. <laughs> like you would just look over when you're out, you'd look over at the waves breaking over and the, you know, like really far out. It just looked, it looked like something out of a movie, like, or out of like a, Nazare or something because like the waves were so big and it was so far in between the waves it was just massive such a long distance 
unfortunately it ended up being a terrible session it was not good winging conditions at all there was uh, the sun's like kind of annoying there was a ton of seaweed you couldn't go 50 yards without getting seaweed on your foil and i'm not talking like one or two strands there'd be like 30 strands of seaweed or like 10 strands in one of those big furry long ones at one point i dropped in on a really good wave and it was like one of my best opportunities of the day and i hit like one of those seaweed logs and i had put the viper 150 on it because I, I knew I, I i feel comfortable on that foil i know i can handle a lot with it i know i can turn well it was just too slow to go down those big waves they were big and they were steep but they were like kind of almost like a step pattern like it would be like one drop in and a little up and then a big drop in and i would i would try to get on it and i wouldn't i didn't have the speed especially when i got a couple of strands of seaweed on the foil i wasn't able to generate the speed and glide to actually drop in very well so i hit a couple but they were not good like they weren't good rides slava was on the eagle 790 even with the seaweed i did see him get one or two really good rides going really fast down the line and he was on the wave like a, a big wave for a long time also i put the 95 mast on it i don't know something just didn't feel right like i, I didn't have something right the windsurfers on the other hand were tearing it up even a lot of the windsurfers didn't go out but a few of the really good windsurfers went out and they were crushing it when we got back in we saw this one windsurfer i don't know his name just get on a double it was like two times mast high wave it was huge huge wave he said when he got on it everything went dark it was so big we watched him on that one and it was just a big old like perfect like white water almost like a barrel and then he was just carving up it it was an incredible ride i wish we had been filming it it was so good two windsurfers completely blew up their sails on the short break on the way in I blew up my wing like at the last minute. Like I, I pumped all the way into like 10 feet. I hit some seaweed. I got stuck in the seaweed. That shore break, like it's not like that big. It's not, it's really not big at all. It would like suck so hard that it, it would get like in the wings, like getting sucked in by the water and then it hits your board. And at that point I was over it. It just like completely ripped my wing, uh, before I could get in. But we survived. We're here and there's some lessons to be learned for sure. You know, I, I talked about in the Epic Road Trip video, like, oh, we should wing Mavericks on a swell. And after riding today, I just don't think it's very realistic or feasible. This waves were like probably 10 foot and some as big as 15 feet. Uh, honestly, like, you know, California measurements, Hawaiians might call it something different. But I mean, they were massive. Like that wave that that windsurfer was on was like two times the mast height the ones that smashed me i don't know how big they were they were probably 10 to 12 is my guess but i don't know hard to hard to know they probably weren't the biggest of the day though and though and with the wing and the the board and the foil and the leash that was about all i could handle if they were any bigger i would be underwater and and, and not able to control the the smash that was that was kind of it i've been meaning to put like a quick release on my leash for a while i do figure like if it like if it was bad enough like the wing attachment point will just rip off because i've i've seen that happen it didn't happen yesterday but i was holding on to the luff handle mostly except for that one time it got away from me so that kind of like mitigated the the force you know if i'd had the quick release i might have used it and then i would have been in a completely different nightmare scenario mavericks the problem with that is like so it can go up to like 20 25 feet i mean there's smaller days and stuff but the problem at mavericks is i was talking to slav about this you can get worked by two waves before you're able to come up for air you get hit by one you're completely underwater for like a minute or something and then you're unable to come up for air before the second one lands on your head and you're under again it, it's called like a two-wave hold down the wing and the and the foil it's like an anchor it just pulls you under so i think like the only way to do mavericks like 
even remotely safely, and safely is like a, a joke of a word there, you'd have to have like a jet ski support, you'd have to scope it out, it'd have to be on the smaller side day, and I think you'd have to use no le no leash on the wing or board. And then you just, you're going for it one time. And then if you, and then you have to have like a inflatable vest. If you get smashed, you know, you, you just let go of the wing, you let go of the board, you pop your airbag, and then hope the jet ski gets you. That's the only way on a wing I think it's actually really feasible at all. But I mean, the, the biggest problem here was not when I was riding waves, right, at Davenport. I wasn't... I didn't have any issue with the wave riding. I could ride those big waves pretty well, and then you just kick out before the, the big white water hit, you know, every time, you're fine. It was just getting out. And Davenport is one of the easier places to get out in some way. This is not the session I thought it would be. There's like no footage from this, you know. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's serious out there. It's a, it's a serious game at that point. Definitely makes you feel mortal. And I'm not like too worried about dying winging or big waves or whatever like if it happens it happens but i definitely was worried about like causing a big <laughs> commotion and stink with like low coast guard and fire department and just uh yeah that kind of thing but we'll see if i continue to do the big wakes wave stuff and going after that today i'm gonna go get some breakfast and then we're gonna go scope out scott's creek i think it's gonna be like a hair smaller today the wind's gonna come up earlier i don't want to stay out too late because i gotta work tomorrow i gotta drive back and stuff i might give it a burn um if it if it looks sketchy i won't do it but scott's creek is bigger and it looks more closed out but i've gone out there on a pretty big day not quite as big as yesterday but a pretty big day and i got out really easily because the wind comes into the beach it gets you know deep pretty quick you jump in during a you know whenever the sets are down and then you're able to get up on foil and, and get out. So that's what I'm gonna check out today. Here at uh, Waddell. It's big and, but it's not, not as big as yesterday here. I'm not sure you could get out here. Maybe, there's a chance. Looks a lot more manageable today though. Go down to Scott's Creek and check that out. And of course, right after I said it looked manageable, a couple of massive sets came in and yeah, there's no channel here. It's super closed out. But the wind was already up, so I headed down to Scott's Creek and you can see it's just a cleaner wave. It's more of like a point break off the reef and it enables you to get out with that channel. And it was still pretty big, but a little bit more manageable than the day before there was also some whales way outside can't really see them uh because of my phone uh the one problem was there was a lot of seaweed in the water like a ton of seaweed right in the in the break of the wave you can see the surfers out there here's one of them riding a smaller wave but you know, you have that channel to get out. And if I timed it right, I, I knew I could get out. I knew I'd be able to get out here. All right, so I'm checking out Scott's. Uh, let's fix that. It, uh, it looks pretty good. It looks really easy to get out in between some, there's some big sets, but in between them, it looks pretty easy to get out. Unfortunately, there's a ton of seaweed in the water, so I just don't know if it's if it's worth it. I mean, it could be okay outside the main break, but inside the main break, there's just like so much seaweed. I'm in the car, so it's less windy. But I don't know, yeah, I, just don't, I mean, I, I'd like to get some redemption, but I just don't know if it's even worth it.
I wasn't able to ride the waves because of the seaweed on the inside, but it felt like redemption and I was really starting to have a good session until... Yep, that's my wing ripping away from me and then popping and just floating away. I'm really far out to sea. Well, I was having an epic session, having a great time, and I attached my leash to the handle just in case I got smashed again, it would rip away. Unfortunately, it ripped away when I dropped the wing one time, so... I'm here down at the bottom of Scott's Creek, seeing if I can retrieve my wing. Mostly because I want to save the Coast Guard a headache if they get a report. And I want my, my GoPro footage. A kiter named Frank towed me in a little bit, and then I had to I had to go in right through the big shore break. But it's a lot better without a wing and just the board. There's my wing out there. I don't know if you can see it. It's getting closer. Let's go, we got it back, literally like right at the rocks. After that, it was gonna get stuck in the cove or maybe go to Davenport, but there was a counter current that brought it back. It was going past the rocks. Yeah, we got the GoPro back. Wing is screwed, but the GoPro's back. It was, it was like drifting out over here and then it kinda came back in around there. Over that rock, I rock climbed up there. Had to do a mantle, I did not have the energy for that. Uh, there's a cove. I don't know if it's accessible from the road. And then I could see windsurfers like over at Davenport, but it wasn't far enough out for that. Look how we're all the way down at the end of Scott's, amazing. I ran into Vince on my walk of shame back. He was out there having a great time kiting. I don't know which one he is here, but yeah. <laughs> oh man, what a session. What ridiculous. Just kooking out left and right the last two days. I don't think I'm like, I don't like ever kook out. I've kooked out the last two days. I put the leash onto the love handle because it wouldn't fit through the, 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 um, the leash attachment. And I was like, you know, I used to ride it like that all the time. And if I get smashed like I did yesterday, then the wing will rip away and it'll be like a, an automatic quick release since I haven't put one in yet. Dude, I got it so easy. So easy. So much better than Davenport. F Davenport. I don't think I'm ever going back there. There was a ton of seaweed, especially on the inside. But once I got out, it was pretty decent. I couldn't ride the wave waves, but I could catch some of the ground swell on the outside. Started doing some tricks. was having a good time. There was like a dead seal. I didn't love that. I was like, oh, and it was like right where I needed, like right in the line I was going at. I was like, great. It's probably a bunch of sharks hanging out about around this thing but i didn't have to clear the foil that much once i figured out where to ride i was having a great session i was having fun i landed one really good flock i don't know if it's on uh, get to that in a second but um yeah and then i just let go of the wing one time and poof, it was gone i mean i didn't even like it wasn't even like a hard it was windy but it wasn't even like a hard let go but yeah whoops uh this great uh kiter uh really cool dude named frank towed me in um a little bit like to the breakers and then i was on my own i had to ride the, the the worst of the shore break in it was pretty rough but a lot better than when you have the wing i was able to to let the board skim across and let it pull me across and it was it wasn't super sketchy at all it was intense but not sketchy um i did almost roll over the foil once but other than that totally fine and then frank had said hey you know just it, it might the stuff i was like oh man i hope the coast guard doesn't go like looking for my wing and stuff and and then he's like no no it might come in and it and so i I left my board on, and i immediately walked down to the end and i was like yeah, oh my god i can see it and it and it would look like it was going to go too far into like this cove which you can't get to without going down like a rope and stuff and it just came right into the end um and i just waited for it to come in and i jumped out and grabbed it and i got the gopro back the wing is the wings toast like it it the bladder like came out through it and like it's only a 300 hundred dollar wing 
in the base case and then brand new wings, my backup wing, brand new. But um, just repairing it, it would be the same price as just buying a new one. Some lessons there to talk about. Um, you know, th this whole experience has made me think I got to get my fitness up and I got to start working on uh, my breath and being able to hold my breath longer. So I'm going to probably do a video on that and try and trying to increase my ability to hold my breath. There's like a program Slava was telling me about. So I gotta work on that. I gotta get my fitness up. Cause like even just like paddling in and stuff, you know, fitness is key. Um, a bigger board would be good for these days. Slava was on a 90 liter yesterday. And then the other guy that was out yesterday at Davenport was on a downwind board. Just the ability to slog out and maybe even stand up and point a little bit upwind, keep you in the channel, keep you safe. It's definitely something to think about. It's a great day, so much better than yesterday. Unbelievably, it's still a good day, even though I lost a wing and uh, had to paddle in and all that. I, I had had a lot more fun. It just it, these conditions are better. Like the really big conditions, it's it's a little bit serious. I mean, it was really big today too. To me, that's just a better um, solution than Davenport, where like yeah, there's this great channel, but there's no wind and, and there's more seaweed. And, Nah, no thanks, Davenport. No thank you. Anyway, is is big wave riding worth it? I don't know. It's going to have to be something you decide on your own. I see myself continuing to do days up to as big as yesterday. I do. But you got to be smart about it. Not throw together your gear last minute and make some dumb decisions. But peace out. And now we wait.